I'll get started here and uh, let's see here. Um, I'll be relatively brief as I, I said, I had about 10 minutes. So the, the work in itself is, could be much, much, uh, I could go much, much more in depth. Um, mm -hmm. Let's see here. My name is Patrick. Um, and I'm going to talk briefly about uh, this project that I'm doing, which is kind of a um, um, curatorial meta narrative called Studio Visits in the Post uh, Human Atelier. And um, so I'm at Creative Digital Media and Mass Communication at uh, Winona State University in the United States. And a lot of my AI work um probably hasn't been shown so much in the west because until two years ago i had spent six years in the united arab emirates uh primarily at zayed university the federal university in the in in uh, abu dhabi so um i'll just touch on it very briefly so um i have been working in the new media field for about um 30 years as an artist curator and theorist and um, dealing in notions of how media shape our reality. So you can see some of my work earlier here in, um, uh, I was part of the activist group Artmark, which became the Yes Men, um, a Second Life performance art group, Second Front, um, and then a couple of some of my tapestry work um, and um, algorist work. Uh, this was uh, my 2015 solo show in New York, uh, Random Internet Cats. And then this is some of my um, um, acemic calligraphy uh, that um, I fed through um, GANs at, um, let's see here, um, playform.io to try to create a personal Rorschach. I, I called that uh, particular project personal taxonomy. Um, and a lot of other things like here, like uh, my, my still lives, which were um, uh, also, um, which were also GANed and uh, styled and uh, GANed through uh, um, Let's see your style again and uh, playform.io. So I've been doing this for about three decades. So um, so let's just kind of fast forward fairly quickly into the idea of uh, when about uh, middle of last year, I decided to go away from the um, PyTorch GAN sort of um, uh, you know, collective uh, training models uh, that I used to do from my my calligraphy work and my my paintings um, over at the um, Playform into, um, uh, I was working with, um, working with um, Night Cafe for a while and then I found uh, Mid Journey. And, um, you know, at first I was uh, not quite um, satisfied with things because I was, um, um, you know, on the mid-journey server and finding people doing pretty tropic sort of work. And then um, I decided to take what I, uh, two things is that I decided to uh, think of what I was doing as concrete prose with, with code. And then secondly, I decided to take a contestational aesthetics to it. In other words, um, I wanted to try to find the things that were not representational in uh, the visuals of a um, of a of a clip based um, AI, so I did two things. First, I decided to go away from everything that I heard uh, everybody typing on the other side. Of this, so in other words, that was almost sort of like an aesthetics of negation. And then on the other hand, um, I considered the latent space of the Leon Five database that um, that um, um, Midjourney was using as an abstract space. And in the beginning, I decided conceptually, how do I how do I deal with an abstract space? And so I decided to start querying it with uh, notions of abstract architecture, like uh, Kurt Schwitter's um, Merzbau, just as a beginning, and Cornell, and, and so on. And so what I wound up doing is was this um, about 12 different series called the uh, Architectures of the Latent Space, that you can see here are quite unusual in the fact that they they they're still referring a little bit to um Schwitters, but nevertheless they're much more uh sculptural and much more um you know much flatter um and so these these went on for about 12 but this is just kind of beginning of my work in that area um then next um i started finding what i felt were narratives of absence um 
So on one hand, um, you know, between, I have multiple differences of abstraction. Um, I mean, multiple, multiple notions of abstraction. Um, on one hand, um, I wanted to see what was perhaps transcendent of realism. Um, so say, for example, I started playing around with um, um, irreal objects in a photography studio. So this is a, a simulated photo of a four-dimensional cube, a tesseract. And of course, which isn't supposed to be representational, but you know, it's. I thought it was very interesting that it came up this way and that it was actually glowing, and it was illuminating. It was illuminating the space, and so this this told me that I was on a um, that I was on a path in which I was starting to confuse the translator, and that it was starting to give me things that were in between its sets of parameters. Which this is this is what I was very much interested in. Um, so this is another, um, body of work called the lacunae, um, voids, basically, uh, brutalism and empty, um, empty, um, um, billboards. I was inspired by a, uh, a post that Joseph DeLapp put on from, um, from, from Scotland of a, of a blank billboard. And, uh, one of the things that I noticed that these systems try to do is that they try to represent something. They try to fill space. If there's a blank space, it tries to put something in it. So um, it tries to fill space with signifiers. So one of my challenges was then to try to, you know, keep that space open to create empty spaces. Um, so this resulted in experiments with empty, sorry, art studios. I, I, um, um, I dictate uh, where artists were not present. So, or either the artist had no physical form, which that was kind of the kind of the conceptual trigger. Um, these spaces turned out to have multiple forms and, uh, you know, had multiple forms and aesthetics, as you can see here. In other words, the, there was a lot of um, variation. So I thought, how do I? put these things together. I mean, there are multiple ways that I deal with these images. So say, for example, as opposed to uh, as opposed to uh, Anna, I actually am making large numbers of contact books. In other words, I will have maybe about four or 500 in a series, and I'll create a contact book. And this gets away from this idea of, um, you know, choice anxiety. And so on one hand, um, I have a book that's ready for publication that, you know, someone can see my entire process and they can see the entire three, four, 500 images. But um, in this case, um, what I thought was very interesting is that, you know, um, I wound up going into a bit of reverie around the fantasy of these um, artists who I'd been looking into these, uh, into their studios and, you um, you know, they, they weren't in or they didn't exist in a physical form. So myself having uh, worked in criticism, curation, theory, and being an artist, I decided to take these things and create a metastructural scaffold, um, basically to create a meta narrative, a curatorial uh, meta narrative uh, based around this concept of this body of 50 artists, you know, who I have conceptually visited their studio, you know, think about, you know, theoretical uh, constructs such as, you know, Baudrillard, Benjamin, you know, um, you know, note, uh, aspects of, of absence, and then create a form, which was actually in many ways, it was a, it was a catalog, um, which pre, you know, which was uh, kind of in a Baudrillardian sense, but, you know, was preceded the exhibition. Uh, there's a lot of um, precedent for this. You know, there's uh, Duchamp and the Point and Valise, and uh, I've done work like this before, in which um, you know I've had exhibitions, um, you know, in 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 formal spaces such as an iPod. Um, this is a 2009, the iPod and Valise. Uh, iPod is Boyd for Media Works. So, and then I said, well, why can't I do? the same thing with a catalog. Why can't I use the formal constraint of a catalog to discuss, um, you know, the sociology of AI, um, you know, the, um, you know, some of the uh, social anxieties 
and uh, put this into a you know into a conceptual framework that um, is is quite powerful beyond its its own formal constraints. So another constraint that I have also come upon frequently as a new media curator and artist is that of time. Um, often a often a moment in technological art or um, you know, or in a in a in a form is often quite ephemeral. Um, so say, for example, I've done things, I've curated shows on um, uh, handheld art, um, screensavers and so on. And you know these things, um, you might have a three to six month uh, period of time in which um, these things um, go through. I mean, actually, in this case, I'm finding that this is um, this particular body of work is tied a great deal formally to the Midjourney 4 engine um, because Midjourney 5 has a much different uh, representational space. Um, so, so the thing is, is that, you know, one thing that's important is, you know, where it's, where it's situating itself in society, you know, how it's developing as in a formal sense. And then, you know, is there time to deploy an exhibition? And most times, you know, most institutions are, unless you're dealing with a festival, you're doing about a year out, possibly two. And of course, every essay that I'm writing now, I'm putting in a disclaimer saying that this is written at such a date, such a year, such a month, and this may be obsolete or dated by the time that you read this. Um, so I think that in the case of something that's developing as quickly as AI, um, you know, this idea of being aware of the temporal nature of the of the form itself. So I decided to deploy the catalog first. So, uh, you know, let the museum show emerge from this and, you know, create the catalog and valise. Uh, as I said before, I've been creating these contact books, you know, which are, um, you know, kind of a kind of reverse catalogs in themselves. Um, probably I'm, I'm almost up to 15. I've only mentioned about six or seven on my, on my Instagram. And, um, but in general, I'm looking at the idea of curation as an artistic cur a scaffold. So, you know, given this project, you know, a curatorial frame structures that narrative, you know, so much more around, you know, um, metastructural, conceptual ones that, you know, that, um, you know, rather than representing the images themselves. So, you know, it's a narrative, narrative dealing with the anxieties that society has about AI and culture. So what happen if what happens if um you know we we finally get rid of those annoying artists and um you know basically replace them with AI as a as a little bit of a um, as a provocation. So here's the structure of the piece. Um the overall block is the catalog. Um there's an essay we have essay and construction, you know, human, that's, that's my part. Um, there's a, you know, a name, which uh, I imagined from uh, colleagues. And, and so I'm, I'm kind of reimagining in a synthetic lens, uh, my, my community, um, the studio image, as we can kind of see through the narrative that I've presented, um, I started finding these empty spaces. And I let myself run through about a couple hundred of them. And I, chose the 50 most um, um, salient ones. And then I took that image, did a describe, and then also did um, Midjourney allows you to have a function called slash describe. You put in the image and that gives you a description of that image. And then I took that along with a, just a brief discussion of the, uh, of the artists and what they do to GPT-3 and I would get a statement. Um, so here's the form. You have the um, you you have the the name. I, this is the first one I did. Artificium three three four J four five two, kind of along the lines of um, THX eleven thirty eight, and um, it came from this this initial image. And then I took these plus a uh, plus a description from Midjourney, put it into GPT three, and here you say. You know, here I'm as an artist, my work is an expression of my innermost thoughts and emotions. I seek to capture the energy and chaos of the world around me 
using both brush, uh, bro, bold brush strokes and vibrant colors to um, convey my message. I'll talk about this in a second. Um, so these were basically 52-page um, um, spreads. Uh, the whole book is about 110 pages. Um, and it fits very much, you know, with a with a uh, catalog format. Um, so the name, as I said before, you know, these were based on uh, the, you know, the conceptual frame of the artist I was thinking of based on the image that um, was generated. Um, you know, some of the concerns I saw in, um, you know, in the mass media and loosely upon those of names of, of colleagues, um, family, et cetera. So in many ways, what I was doing was sort of taking a fantasy and you're know, re-envisioning my own community under a synthetic lens. Um, so these images came first when developing across, you know, the imagined artists of diversity, identity, species, planet. This is kind of interesting here is that on one hand, I wasn't necessarily thinking of my, you know, of, of my own uh, ethnographic sphere because of the fact that, you know, I had been working in, a in, in Arabia, West Asia, Central Asia, um, you know, I was thinking of very um, dealing with uh, people also from Africa and the subcontinent. So, you know, a lot of these people that of, of my experience, you know, figure into this, um, what I'd say, this this global latent space of imagined artists, um, you know, not just those of you know, the European space or even those more specifically of North America. So, and then I expanded this out, you know, to species and to planet, as we'll see in just a moment. So here we have in uh, alien sound artists, you can see this is, um, you know, almost a, a kind of a cyberpunk looking, um, you know, um, unit and um, you know, some very, very otherworldly art. Um, you know, studio image, um, I forget which one who this is, but um, almost uh, kind of a um, New England style look. And then third one is a, a Persian painter uh, obsessed with color, uh, Zafran Pavlovi, um, based on, um, actually based on my partner, Nagina Tasabian, who is, is currently uh, waiting to come over to America from, um, from Tehran. Um, so this is kind of a rough out, a, a outline. Um, I have a PDF of this. If you want to see it, you can, you can get in touch with me. Um, but um, so here also, I take the um, the name and the framework of the artist practice, and you can see here that this information went into GPT-3 reading statements, which are almost indicative of the usual graduate school, school art statements. Once again, each of these elements reflects some of the anxieties that um, you know, are in uh, the popular media. And um, you know, on one hand, I'm using this as kind of a dull dull mirror um, from a from a so almost a visual sociology standpoint, basically people like Becker. Um, so um, in addition, um, this is a draft, but more is just a, uh, a pro forma approach you know, to the conceptual aspect of this. This is actually available out on Blurb. It's about $100 and it still needs a couple of little revisions. But um, you know, on one hand, you know, this is something which is from a materialist perspective, you know, in basically inverting a lot of practices in regards to the normal modalities of, of, of exhibition, curation, and um, execution, you know, of a, of, of a show or an exhibition. Um, so on one hand, I'm thinking also about, you know, the usual mechanisms, you know, of, um, you know, of the, of artistic presentation, you know, within an institutional, with an institutional path. Um, you know, so not only is this, you know, something that's dealing with AI, but it's using AI to, you know, talk about the sociological space, talk about the institutional space in which these works um, inhabit, and then how these works are disseminated. In other words, on one hand, it's, it's dealing with institutions, capitalism, and um, digital production. So issues. Um, you know, AI exacerbates, you know, any of the social anxieties about technology. The deluge of images problematizes any cohesive narrative. And I hope that by using this meta narrative through this conceptual frame, you know, I'm basically, um, you know, being able to focus, um, 
know, some of the some of the social and cultural um, questions about AI and the the future of society and how it affects it to uh, you know within within a fairly neat package. Um, uh, design and curatorial fictions provide solutions for cultural spaces. I feel is that they, they, you know, that typically can't keep up with the speed of technology. And then bespoke ad artifacts, which I think are kind of problematic in themselves, can remain in place far, you know, long enough for the institution to adopt them. Um, in other words, if you get something together and get it out there, you can, uh, you know, have that in place, take it to uh, take it to institutions, and then hopefully then that they can. Um, explicate the work. Um, let's see your sequels. Um, I've had a lot of people look at, ask me, you know, who are these artists? You know, what's their work actually look like? You can see, you know, excerpts of their work in, in the studios, but, you know, people were asking me, you know, is it to take, to, to take the, uh, to take the conceit one step further. And I'm starting to work on that. The idea of that, uh, you know, content, can, can, and this is this is actually um, the artist Zafran, which, which I talked about earlier. Um, you know, these both continues the fictions and then humanizes the story, which also problematizes it. Um, and so this is um, kind of this project in a nutshell. Uh, I invite you out to go out to my uh, Instagram at Pat Lick, uh, Pat Lick the underscore art, and um, thank you for your time and. This is another one of our uh, the artists, uh, Vedran Vucic, um, and uh, once again, you know, this is, you know, once again, an entirely completely constructed fantasy. But once again, as Picasso said, you know, these are lies that uh, reveal the truth, you know, about ourselves as a dim mirror. So, thank you.